Mate, they should have edited a dummy to put in his mouth. What an absolute sook. Yeah, I just thought our ability to hang in there when, when things weren't going our way was, was really impressive. Commentators, the whole game. To be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a... Hello everyone and welcome to the round four review after the Blues have beaten Frio in one of the greatest heists you'll ever see and uh, Jesus, there's plenty to unpack from, from that and um, yeah, a lot of controversy but good teams find a way to win no matter what the circumstances are and we did that. Luke? Bloody oath, it. mate. <laughs> Bloody oath. How, How good. good was that? Yeah. What a heist. It was. It really was. Um, yeah, it, like there's an element of you know, empathy towards that situation because you know, if, if it was us, yeah, we'd be absolutely livid. Yeah. But at the same time, we've experienced these heartbreaks and bad luck in the past. You, know, you only have to go back a couple of years ago and in, in twenty back end of 2022 when we had losses like this and um, and couldn't get on the right side of them. So to be on the right side and have a bit of luck. And good teams over history need an element of good luck to yep. succeed in the competition, and that's what we're getting at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, the way I see it is, you know, sometimes you know the ball bounces for you, and sometimes it doesn't, and you know that's the way the cookie crumbles. And mm. at the end of the day, four points. Four points. That's all that matters. Yeah. Doesn't matter how you get them. Um, and the hoodoo's broken. The hoodoo's over. broken. Yep. Stick that one. Fair and clean. <laughs> I'm sick of hearing it, mate. What the, the commentators? The, Ad the whole game. The Adelaide oh, Oval. They've never won a game yeah. here. They've never won a game. They're acting like we haven't won in 50 years. There. It's only I mean, been 10 years. The footy's been. I mean, not only only 10 years still sounds bad, but they're acting like we've it's been around for 50 years. How long has the footy been at, at Adelaide Oval for? Ten, ten years. Ten years. Like 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Cry me a river. Yeah, and we've been. Garbage in that time, and Adelaide and Port Adelaide have both been pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, Adelaide were grand finalists. Yeah, and I feel like we rarely ever play Adelaide there. We will, will always play Port Adelaide there, and yeah. Port have been since 2014 have been unreal, unbelievable. Yeah, we're a top 14 nearly every year. Yep, since then. So, if you look, yeah, and we won two games in 2018, and Adelaide Oval definitely wouldn't have been one of the favourite no uh, games that year. And so. you know what? Loyalty. That's where yeah, it lies. Exactly. 2018, we won two games. Yeah. Here we are, 2024, we're four and zip. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to soak up every second of it. Yeah. Even if it does come down to, you know, touched off James Aish's arm. Too bad, champ. <laughs> Umpire doesn't see all of them. They didn't see the out on the full off the boot in the second quarter. So I, to, to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a free or like a touched been paid off someone's arm or other body part it's only usually off the fingers or the hands that yeah. umpires really pay them yeah like i feel like if it skids off someone's back and the ball barely sort of moves yeah it's just play on isn't but it what's the difference between say it well i mean it did come off james Ash's it arm. did I'm absolutely not gonna, i'm not going to deny that but what's the difference between that and someone taking a pack mark where there's three hands on it yeah and that always and you always and it always gets paid yeah exactly you know or the man in front rule where yeah. there's two two clean sets of hands on it yeah and the the front bloke you know mm. gets paid the mark yeah more well, than one person's touched the ball if this happened if this is happening in the first quarter no one's talking about it correct it's the fact that it decided the game yeah and then of course the media and social media went nuts on it, you know, going, oh, we can't win a game without free kicks and, you know, can't win a game without the umpires. What a crock of shit. <laughs> what an absolute crock of shit. Mm. We, we, we were down in the free kick count for starters on the weekend. Pretty sure. 16-12. Don't quite. I actually, I probably should have looked this up before just to verify it. I, I might even do it on the, on the fly. You, yeah. keep, you keep talking. Well, keep. for me, Frio... Stick it up your ass, as far as I'm concerned. Like, how, it happens. It's happened to every club, and the fact that they're blowing it up and it's on the back page of their, you know, of their uh, newspaper, and there was a Jordan Clark poster that was available. 
Um, I did see in that, the yeah. in the WA or the Western Australian or whatever it was. Mate, they should have edited a dummy to put in his mouth. What an absolute sook. What a sook. And you know what, Freo fans, at the end of the day, ill discipline cost you the game. Mm-hmm. Not fr- not a free kick. It wasn't even a free kick. It was a mark. Got paid a mark. See him all the time. Yeah. You know? Tom Lynch. How many does he get paid when he when he you know when other people have touched the footy? So, as far as I'm concerned, Freo, have a sock. Put yeah. A, put a put a fucking sock in it. Anyway, what I was trying to get up was out of Freo's nine goals. I think they kicked maybe ten goals. Mm. Where is it? They kicked nine goals for the game. Yeah. Apparently, six of them were from free kicks. Yeah. Six. Six. Within twenty five meters out. So, really. If we're going to go on umpire decisions costing us costing yep. games, yep. then six goals from free kicks is mm. a lot uh, a lot more stark than than the one or the two at the end. I'd say absolutely. I- and if we're going to go off off that rubbish, then it was uh, seventy three to twenty seven was the final score. If we so, take off those six goals from free oh, kicks. I was going to say, were they twenty seven? Oh, uh, yeah, without that, those free kicks. Yeah, exactly. Without the yeah. free kicks yeah. in front of goal. Yeah. You know, and, and no one talks about those. No. No, again, again, it's it's context because they, they happened earlier in the game. Yeah. And no one's really talking about it. Everyone's talking about the last two, three minutes, whatever it was. Yep. So, and yeah, anyway, I, let's be honest. We, we got away with one. We yeah. can all admit that. Yep. It, should have been, it shouldn't have been a mark. At the same time, there was still two minutes on the clock. Anything could have happened. Right, who's saying that? Who's saying that Frio? Well, who's saying that 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 stoppage that you know Cottrell doesn't mark that? It's obviously mm. it's a ball up. Yep. Who's saying we don't score from that? Hundred percent. Exactly. So, like, you could say anything so about so many match. different scenarios. Exactly. So let's not just pin that on that. Yes, it does. It's not a great look, and mm. um, there's a lot of different things that have come out from it. But yep. yeah, Again, let's go back. Hindsight's to hindsight's a wonderful thing. Let's go back to Lukey Jackson. Any danger of just at the hip, mate? Instead of smashing it 10 metres oh, that was 10 bad. Meters that was back bad. into the yeah, contest. Yeah, shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. so many things yeah. that led up to that If we're really going to pick out everything. Yeah. You know, ridiculous. Yeah. And at the end of the day, Koch had to go back and kick it too. Mm. And he did. He did. So We've seen this from him before. Oh, I, had, I, had, I had complete faith in him. Yeah, that he was I, kick I didn't it. think he was going to miss. I'd, yeah. Yeah, and just clutched up. Matthew Coldrill. Oh, clutchrill. <laughs> clutchrill. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, what a man. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Anyway, well, let, let's let's dive into it. Like, yeah. let, let, let's start. Obviously, first half was a bit interesting. I was, yeah, I wasn't overly impressed with the way things were going. I thought mm. Freo were all over us and we just couldn't get our game yeah. moving at all. But yeah. at the same time, we would, it never got out of reach for us. Like, it was only a goal or two in it max yeah. throughout that time. Yeah. And then they were all over us. So. Yeah. I thought for us to hang in was was impressive, but the mm. way we were playing and the way Freo were on top of us just it was a bit concerning. Yeah, and this is the thing though with the the way that the game did play out is because it was so low scoring and the way that Freo played and the way that they controlled the whole first half, they kept us in the game with the way that they played and their game style. If you're going to kick four goals to three, and you know, and then complain that you lost by a couple of kicks at the end of the game when you had control of the game. Yeah, mm. really. They need to learn to score. They do. Like they, if they, they're going to dominate they like have that, have to score. There's no point dominating like that if you're not going to be able to punish teams. No, because they really they, if they were a clinical team, they'd probably win by six, seven goals. Yeah, minimum, I'd like, say. On the the way the game was played, yeah, they probably win by that margin. They should have put us away in the they first half. Yeah. Definitely, or even in that third quarter, they had a lot of chances to do it. Their like the the possession totals in that first half was something ridiculous. It was like sixty five to thirty five percent, or something along those lines. That's that's a lot more, you know, ball in hand. Yeah, you know, compared to the other side, and and to be to only go in was a three points up at half time. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, Gee, was, yeah, exactly. You know, so you, like, yeah, you only got yourself to blame, really. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I. Like, Kudos to them. Like they, they were all over us. From clearances, they absolutely dominated. Um, that's another thing about our game so far this year. Is mm. Our clearance game is, a little, is I wouldn't say a little bit off. It's it's, it's def- definitely off. Yeah. Um, we're missing one man. We're missing we're missing SW18. Mm. Um, we get him back next week, which is great. But, yeah, we're, we are struggling in that department when we were number two or number three in that area last year. And mm. that was our one wood, wasn't it? So, yeah. 
Um, but in saying that, though, last year our turnover game wasn't great. No. And, and that's, now what that's how, one of the best in the that's game. That's how we're scoring at the moment. So, and to be honest, yeah, clearance is good, but it's not the be all and end all. Like, it gives you that first look. Mm. But if you're turning the footy over, you know, 60, 70 times in a game and you're scoring at a, at a decent rate off that, you know, I'll, I'll take that every day of the yeah. week. So, yeah. and if you're even, evening the clearances, but then you're winning turnover, you're going to win most games. Yeah, correct. Well, so. I think North had an extra clearance on us last week and we still go. won by 56. So, yep. um, yeah, I mean, yeah, in saying that, it's it, definitely an area of our game where you, we'd love to brush that up. But, mm. yeah, I think Walsh coming back is definitely going definitely gonna to help that one. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just thought our... Yeah, I just thought our ability to hang in there when when things weren't going our way was was really impressive, and yep. that's ultimately what what won us the game in the end. Yeah, and the man that just put us on his back again, just that big goal from Rick, unbelievable outside fifty. Yep. You know the cradle celebration yep. as well. That was it was good, just wasn't it? fitting, wasn't yep. it? I think the after the week he had, obviously, you know, his mind would have been completely off footy mm. throughout the whole week, and yeah, I'm sure he probably. You know, didn't sleep his best, and his preparation was obviously very different. I think he only flew up oh, the night before, potentially, of the game. So yeah. his preparation would have been well off than the normal, but he still was arguably in our top three, four, five players on the ground. Yeah, he was he was immense, especially late in the game when we needed him. I mean, we were not surprised. Like, why are we acting like we're surprised? Like, yeah. it's Patrick Cripps for God's sake. Yeah. He's you know one of the greatest that's ever put on a Carlton jumper. So. Yeah, unbelievable performance and mm. super happy for him as well with the with the bub during the week. Yep. Congratulations to uh, Cooper and Mon and uh, little Coda. Coda. She's close. Coda. Coda. <laughs> I think that's the inspiration, isn't it? Bloody hell. What wouldn't it be? <laughs> what an Adonis. Yeah. But that's, yet you know, back back on that, uh, on the clearances, you know, 33 to 20 in stoppage clearances, that's a belting. Mm. So... For us to stick around, you know, uh, f- for the whole game and, you know, and really, you know, stay with them, um, you know, kudos to Freo, but close but no cigar, unfortunately. No, no. I thought, I mean, and talking about players that have, that really stood up and it was the great man, Charlie Curno, who's he yeah. had some big efforts that, yeah, was it, yeah, the third quarter took a massive mark um, just outside the goal square, which was against yeah, two or three huge. Freo players. That was huge. And then, then kicks a kicks a great goal, pretty much tight on the boundary in that third quarter as well, and yep. really got us going yep. in that in that area of the game when when we really felt like Frio were getting on top, and Charlie yeah just just settled us a little bit there, and yep. and then oh, that that mark he took oh, late in the game, it's um, just glass. He's it? like the one hand, like and even like again that that passage of play started from Cripps to Zach Williams. Yep. Zach Williams gets through a few of them. Outstanding work. Yeah. Gets about it deep. 15 blokes tackling Cripps as well. Yeah, And exactly. he just managed to get his arms Again, through. I feel like, I feel like How I've, do you do that? I feel like I've said that on every, on every episode we've How done so far. How does he actually do it? Yeah. He's the greatest I've ever seen do it. It's Being insane. able to get, it, get a, a, a disposal out when you're getting tackled like that. It's yeah. crazy. Um, but yeah, and then, yeah, Zachy's kicked down to Charlie and the mm. one-hander. Oh, my God. When he marked that, I was like, I'm going to win this. You just you're like yeah, but two seconds earlier, I was I was getting ready to put a uh, like a, a loss post up on the channel yeah because it was like it just felt done. Walters kicks that goal yeah. Brody Kemp pretty much gifts him the goal with yep. I don't know what Kemp was thinking doing that just oh, dragging like the ball be. in there. But then like but he had a great game. <laughs> then like trying to stand up and you know and he basically like oh, took yeah, off no, like no. a sprint yeah Kempy hey, you've doesn't com- matter, mate. completely dragged it in. Like, like completely, it was a it's scoop. So, so obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? But he had a good game. Uh, apart from that, you can't yeah. really fault his game. You know, he he played he played a, a solid game, and he probably holds his spot with with uh, Fogarty. Does he, does he hold his spot? Well, Fogarty, well, Marchbank, you think comes back in? I don't think he does. You know, I reckon. No, I don't think he does. Well, I, Kemp I, took fourteen marks, twenty-one touches. That's that's a big. That's game. a huge game. Big game for a defender. And realistically, in a contest. I'm backing Kemp over Marchbank. I reckon Kemp would give Marchbank an absolute bath in a contested marking oh, contest. So that that's it. That's a, that's a, that's the weakness I think I see in Kemp's game. Is really? His one-on-one ability. I think he's good when he can when he can peel like off. Like as an intercept. Like an interceptor when yeah. he peels off. Because I think he's still pretty. He's still quite small mm. in stature. When like imagine imagine seeing him against Tex next week. That's not going to happen. 
Yeah. But it might happen. Yeah, it might. It might when weedering's out of position or something's happened. Yeah. On like quick on the turnover. Yeah. But like I'm just saying, like I think Kemp gets found out a bit against the big bo- big bodies. Yeah. Where I think Marchbank can handle that. Yeah. But then you like Kemp as the interceptor and. Yeah. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see how he goes against like a Cameron and Hawk. Mm. Two big big boys. I don't. Th- I don't. I don't. Even the, the fact of the thought of I don't, it I don't think, me. I don't think you could even like. You, well, you look ahead. We've, we do have Geelong in a couple of weeks. Mm. When you've got the Giants after Adelaide, yeah, and they've got some big boys down there. Yeah, so Hogan, like, Iden, yeah. yeah. So again, like, Brilliant. it's going to be interesting to see what they do because it's it's hard to drop mm. him after that. Even if, yeah, because you think if Marchbank's fit, he comes in. Mm. They the club love him, and yeah, so do we. Like, we, he's a he's a great defender when he's on, mm. when he's healthy. So it's it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Um. So, but anyway, back to what we were saying. Walters kicks that goal after yep. Kemp does that, and it's like it's all over. Like, yep. such a tight game, all game. It's never it, the margin never really got that wide. Yeah, I think it was twelve points. Was the I think it got to tw- when Walters kicks out. I think it was twelve points with like four yep. or five minutes left. Yep, that in the, the context of the game, it was like, oh, yep, it's going to be hard from here. Yep. Um, I'll look at this stat though. Time in front. Oh, that was, yeah. Freo had 94 minutes and 43 seconds time in front, and Carlton had 12 minutes 53. Mm. Suck eggs, I guess. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Like like the, the, all you have to do is be in front at the end, that's don't it. you? Well, that, what was that game last year? I think it was Collingwood-Adelaide. Collingwood were in front for one second. Yeah. And that was the kick just before the final sign that put them in front. Yep. Doesn't matter. You Doesn't matter. I mean, as back, we've mate. said this before. Collingwood won a premiership winning like this. 100% So, like, who says you can't do it? At, at, at the end of the day, you know, quoting the great Dom Toretto, it doesn't matter if you win by a mile or an inch, mate. Mm. Winning's winning. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. And sometimes you, you, you make your own luck too. So, yep. sometimes, yeah, exactly. Like, as, as bad as... It might feel for, for Frio and, and as bad as it, it looks for the AFL, yeah, sometimes your luck just goes your way. And, yep. And I'm sure all Carlton fans listening at the moment can agree that we've uh, <laughs> we've had our fair share of bad luck over the years. So Bloody it's about time we, we get something come our way. Bloody oath we have. We've we've copped it. You know, I, I, look, I think back to games that we we lost, you know, just due to bad decisions, you know, down the ground or wherever it might have been. And it cost us badly. It cost us so many games in the past. And what? Well, as soon as it comes back our way, what? The AFL need Carlton to win a premiership now. Yeah. What a crock, mate. Mm. Uh, Carlton's, Carlton is arguably the biggest club in the competition right now, mm. apart from Collingwood. Yeah. 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 What well, do you think on their day? Sorry, <clears throat> I'm just trying to get a stat up while, while I talk at the Here same time. Here we go. Um, I think... No, I think... Look, look it's hard to... It's hard to mount an argument to say that we're bigger than Collingwood when hmm. you could mount both sides. Oh yeah, absolutely. Both you you could there could be arguments for either. I don't yep. think there's one clear cut who's who's the bigger club in terms of because you look at membership numbers and crowd numbers. Collingwood, yeah, yep. yeah, have beaten everyone out of the park with that. Yeah, but you know, I think from pure noise and passion, hmm. I don't think that anyone matches us with that. Yeah, you know what is uh, just completely off topic, but. How funny is it to see empty crowds at Richmond games? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. That's it, man. You what did you expect? Ever seen a bandwagon yeah. club? What did you expect? Oh, I think there was more at Norwood Oval than there was oh, at the MCG the week before for them. Unbelievable, mate. Like, it just makes me laugh. Yeah. Every time they go back down, just the woodwork gets filled yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. But classic. I did say that they posted 90,000 members. Might have been today or, or yesterday. I'd so, love to see some at the ground. Well, I'd love to see how, man, how many of those numbers are made up or yeah. pet, how, many, how many free ones are given out. Pet memberships. Pet ones, yeah. Exactly. So, um, anyway, Cottrell kicks the goal, puts us in front. And, and then, then, little... then Clarky <laughs> steps up to the plate. There, there's... Oh, there's been so much come out since that to figure out what what was said. Obviously, something bad was said for the umpire to pay a descent free kick because yeah. they haven't really been paying him much this year. Yeah. So something was obviously said. Yeah. There's, there's talk that there was miscommunication. There was he was talking to himself. Um, then there was yeah, a story around him going whatever whatever was said. Time. The umpires heard something and um, and it doesn't surprise anyone that he's 
use dissent because you saw the way Freo players reacted yep. um, at the time. So, And not to mention, you know, there's multiple people that have come out, including the umpire, former umpire, <laughs> you know, saying that, that he wasn't surprised. So by, what does that tell you about by him? him? Yeah. You know, what does that tell you yeah, about him? Yeah, yeah, like? yeah. Yeah. Just keep it like... I'm guilty of it. When I played footy, mm. mate, I loved I loved giving it to the umpires, and it didn't didn't you know put me in good stead. You would have been in trouble if you were playing for Freo on the weekend. Oh, mate! <laughs> I'll tell you what, dissent would have been an understatement. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, I, but, I think yeah, but you're at that level. Yeah, you get paid a lot of money, and at the end of the day, discipline has has let their club down there, and it's, mm. and, and Jordan Clark let himself down. Mm. Really? They did for such a great game for for Frio. Yeah, they really, they, yeah, they it shot the themselves in the it. foot, didn't took, they? At the took end, the yeah, boss off the game. It really yeah. did. Um, and with what should have been a, a should have been a win for them. Yep, for that to for it to end like that, it, it's it's yeah, it, it's disappointing for them, and you, you can empathise with how they would be feeling after that. But yep. um you wouldn't want to miss finals by half a game. No, no, you wouldn't. But I think I think Frio make if they if they if they if they continue the way that they've been playing so far, they're a good side. Albeit, yeah, pretty boring style of footy, but it's yep. it's getting them wins and it's getting them in positions to win. Yeah, I think that I think they almost a lock for finals at this stage if if they yeah. keep that up. If they play the if they play the same way and mm. don't fall off like they did last year, yeah, um, yeah, I think they probably finish well, you know six to eight. Yeah, well, if they can match it with you know us who are meant to be in the top four, mm. they did a number on Brisbane the other week who yeah. you know. Look like they're starting to find a little bit of their mojo. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, they got they got Port Adelaide this Saturday night at Adelaide, mm. so we'll see how they go there and yep. can make a further judgment on it. But yeah, um, I think they'll be fine. But yep. anyway, it's, this is not a free out podcast. Yeah. Back to the Blues. Cottrell kicks the goal. Kennedy has another shot. Ices the game. Celebrations. It's it's going crazy. And, you beauty. Um, yeah, and you can see you can see the scenes Adelaide Oval, and it made made you really jealous to not be there. Yeah, to experience that. Mm. I think it's a it's I think it's a something I have to do next year. I think so. Yeah, I think I think yeah. If you haven't gone now, or if you haven't experienced the first two years, I think you def- everyone will be jumping on for next year. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, and then yeah, great another a, a memorable win, and um, it makes us four and zero, and. Yep. Undefeated for the first time since 1995, and we all know what happened that year. Oh, yeah. So whether that's Ooh, yeah. a sign of things to come, Tom will tell, but it's a great start to the season, and I couldn't be happier with... I mean, I could. There's definitely certain things that we need to improving on, but mm. I think banking wins early and not yep. being at your best is, is a super impressive sign. Yeah, absolutely, mate. And look, at the end of the day, the way I see it is banking the wins early is what, what gets most teams to finals because every, every club has a lull. During the year, you know, you see Port Adelaide last year that lost four in a row or five yeah. in a row, whatever it was. Um, you know, Collingwood lost three out of their last four home and away games. Yeah. So you just need to, yeah, bank them and then time it. Right. Time your run and time your run. But one of the great things that I took out of the game yesterday, and especially after I had a look at the stats as well, is that it was actually quite a evenly spread game in terms of contributions. Like our highest possession getter was Saad, and he had twenty five. Mm. Yeah, so, and we only had seven or eight blokes that got 20 or more. Yeah. So, it was a really well-spread contribution from from everyone. And, you know, if we're going on individual brilliance, you know, it's hard. He's just... Mm. Well, I was just about to ask you what your 3-2-1 was. So, yeah. why, don't we, why don't we go there? Yeah, look, I think, for me, I think Kerno gets one. Yep. He just kicked... Three really important goals. Such crucial stages, crucial, as we discussed. Crucial yeah. goals. Um, two. I think Chera had a really good game mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, he probably he probably was the only one you know that sort of had any sort of forward flow in clearance. Um, Jeez, yeah. And not to mention that first goal. That was a great first goal, wasn't it? A little bit of a little bit of Chris Judd. Yeah, about that one. <laughs> That was unreal. Yeah, it was good. Unreal. Yeah, uh, and then Sard. Sard's three for me. Wow. Yeah. You're you've left out I probably the player on the ground and in the coaches' votes as well for mm. the most votes for us. Mm. Mr. Jacob Weedering. Look, Weedering was Weedering, but Weedering does it he does it every week. Yeah. You know? 
And it's it's one of those things where you go, it's it's almost expected now. And you're going to constantly give a man three, you know, three votes for, you know, for, for taking intercepts because that's that's literally what he does. Yeah. Whereas I think Saad was around the ground, and there were so many little things that he did that prevented Freo from, you know, having an inside fifty. Yeah. You know that that little tap that he does, or you know, just a kick where you've got no idea where it's going to go until it hits his boot. He was so influential yeah. down back. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. And he's, yeah, he, he's yeah, he's my three. Yeah, definitely. Hundred percent. Like yeah, Saad was incredible. Like he's just so reliable, and you just know when he gets the ball, he's going to do something good with it. Yeah. Like he's just he's such. Oh, yeah. I, I. Ever since we've got him, I don't think he's really played a a game where you're like, "Geez, Saad was really off today." Like he, I just he's just been mm. super consistent mm. for us ever since he's come across from Essendon. And yep. um, yeah, I'd love to see him unload though with a little bit of a galloping run he's he's sort of yeah put that, he's put that away a bit yeah. now well like a goal on the run yeah well i think we, we haven't seen that from from him for a while that will that will yeah. raise the roof yeah i'd so love to see him love, love some Adelaide. more goals in his game because that yeah. would, obviously would get the crowd going big time yeah um what about you mate yeah so i gave so oh, I, look, i got caught in the moment um post game when i gave out my player of the match um yeah. on on the channel Okay, oh, it's Cottrell. Go Cottrell. <laughs> yeah. I was mean, oh, like, swept up by, by Cottrell fever. But, uh, in, he was still bloody good. He, was he had a great good. game. He was very if he's good. not in your 3 2 1, I reckon he'd be just under that. Yep. Um, so I thought Cotters was great. He was pretty down against North, so it was a really good bounce back game for him. And then, yeah, comes up clutch. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I gave my one to Kerno as well. I thought he was superb. Yep. Um, gave my two to Saad and then okay. three to Wittering. Yep. That was, yeah. Yep. And then honourable mentions with, yeah, Cottrell and I thought Tommy DeConning was really good as well and mm. had some moments. Um, George Hewitt was really good. Apparently, he was our highest rated player on the ground, yep. according to champion data. Yep. So, again, he's another one who's going under the radar this year. Yep. So, he was and great. I'll tell you what, mate. Jackie Carroll, he's filling his boots, mate. I yeah. love him. Well, this is, this is a problem at the moment, a good problem. Cause Who did you we just We said Sam Walsh is coming back next week. Yeah. Who comes out? Well, Fogarty, Fogarty's out with Fogarty's the suspension, yep. but it's not a like for like. No, not so no, the the, not su- even close. the mix is going to have to change somewhere. So, look, t- to be honest, mate, I, I I think Corey Durden's not in the best best twenty three. I don't like. But then, you know, do you take Durden out the same week Fogarty's out? Probably not. You probably can't lose two little smalls. Pro- yeah, probably not. No, but. When Fogarty's right to go, he has to play. Yeah, over I think Durden. Durden's definitely edge. And even always, he has to play over Durden. Yeah, yeah. Well, you saw always late in the game was really good, wasn't he? Like he has to play. Never over misses Durden. a set shot. His set shot is unbelievable. Yeah, I can't remember the last time he missed a. He set doesn't shot. miss set shots. Yeah, it's he's really good. Insane. Um, and again, you know, the media coming at at Harry for missing one set shot. Yeah. Give me a fucking spell. Fine. Let's just. Yeah, he, he had a bad day, but played against one of the best defenders in the comp, yeah. Yeah, Alex Pierce, who Alex is Pierce sensational. He's massive. I didn't realise he was that tall. How is he that big? He, he, what is he's like 205 centimetres. He towered over Kerno. He made that? Kerno look tiny. <laughs> he made Kerno look like Ed. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He really did. Yeah. He was... I couldn't believe... I didn't realise he was that big. Yeah. Um, but look, at the end of the day, what do you have here? He still had six marks. H? Yeah. Yeah. He still, still did things times. around the ground. Obviously, not at his dominant best as he has been in the first few rounds. But yep. I mean, well, you can't play. You know, yeah, you can't expect him to have that sort of level every week in week out. Um, he's had what eleven? He's kicked eleven goals for this year. Yeah. So yeah, you know, he's, he's still flying. Yeah, we are now a little bit back on the prediction of one forty between them. We're four goals back now. Uh, However, on. let's not let's not jump the gun just yet. Oh. I reckon, still on. I reckon they'll kick more. It's still on, yeah. I still reckon they'll, I reckon they'll kick more yeah. than that. I just think it, this wasn't the right game for H. The ball was coming no. in, wasn't coming in quick enough. Um, too many times where he was just sort of outnumbered in a, yep. in a contest. So it wasn't yep. the best game for, for him to play in. Yep. Charlie can play it because Charlie's just an absolute freak. Yeah, Can do anything. Um, but for Harry's game and the way he plays, I don't think it was the... Yeah, that sort of defensive, mm. scrappy game probably not. You're not probably not going to get the best out of H. Yeah, I think next those. week he's probably it's probably a more prime game under the roof under at the Marvel. Roof. Yeah, 
loves it there yeah um beautiful anything else you want to add before we um before we wrap things up no mate i think it was a uh, quick look ahead to the crows next week yeah yeah absolutely i think it's gonna be interesting to see how adelaide respond now and it seems that every time they're in a lull they always come up against us don't they (laughs) happened last year was it were they in a lull when we played them last year i feel like they i feel like they were two and three can't remember yeah and then decided to kick three thousand goals in the first quarter yeah but different conditions yeah the club's different yeah the yeah the list is different we're under the lid at marvel i don't think we dropped this one I, I think I'll be very surprised nah, if we drop it. Adelaide have not shown enough so far to suggest that they're going to get anywhere near us. Yeah, let's, and let's I, be honest. honestly, I think DeConning's going to give O'Brien an absolute bath. Yeah, I think. Yeah, well, DeConning's had a great start to the year, and yep. again, he's doing everything that we've sort of expected from him so far. Yeah, um, and then getting Walsh back. Yeah, you know, let's. We can't expect Walsh to be Walsh straight well, away, but it's a great player to have back. Elijah Hollands might miss. Yeah, he's probably going to miss. So you think? Yeah, there's talk maybe Ashton Moyer comes in for his debut. Wouldn't mind that. That'd be good to see. Yeah, um, wouldn't mind that. Yeah, so I think, yeah, well... In he terms might as well. Tools under the under the lid. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So you think in terms of changes, yeah, obviously Walsh comes in, maybe an Ashton Moyer comes in. Mm. Um, Fogarty out, Holland's out. You think it's probably just them two, maybe, and then maybe that March Bank Kemp yep. swap. Possibly. I think that's... Let's not tinker too much, unless mm. we have to. Well, don't fix it and, yeah. Yeah. You know, if it's not don't broken, change. Mate, so. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens, mate. But um, no, I'll be down there. You heading down? Uh, potentially. It is the Dale's birthday this weekend. So okay. could have other commitments. But yep. I'll probably be making a last last minute call on it. So. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. I'm, yeah. Just, I'm the same. I've got to rush here after uh, Morty, the Redbacks, assistant coach slash team manager down there. So, hey, uh, Redback. Yes, I'm a red back now, mate. Uh, reserves. Reserves. Yeah. yeah. So first nice. year in first year in the gig, mate. And so. you're going to the footy straight after it. Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, I was going to have to. Yeah, going to have to. So yeah, we've, well. we'll finish at about two. So I should get there in yeah. time. Four thirty start. Yeah, so. love it. Well, if you're not doing anything Saturday morning, go watch the Morty Redbacks. Bloody oath, get down. <laughs> we uh, yeah, we didn't have a great start to the season against East Brighton, but um, we'll we'll be coming. Don't yeah, worry. Love it. Local footy's back. Back Bloody in full eyes. swing now, so absolutely, it's good. All right, well, um, let's leave it there. Let's uh, let's wrap it up and put this game now to the side. It's done. We went to gather round. Got we left with the four points. points. Bloody it's oath! It's genuine. Just get the four points. Get out of there. That's it. That just is, like yeah, that's like a heist, baby. It's like a heist, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely, yeah. in and out. And we've, we've taken them home, and 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 now we've got a big, big month ahead of us. Some really yep. quality opponents coming up too. So. Yep. Um, great to, to be 4-0 and, and and our best start to a year in nearly 30 years. So Bloody it's hell. very good. But yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, like, share it with everyone. The reviews have been coming through and they've been so good. So yeah, keep them coming through as well. And until then, talk next week. Go Blues. Blues.